Yo, what is Slurpy, my dudes? Back again with another ADV narration. Today we got Smilzo from Team Italy versus uh, the Near Curve from Team Oceania, aka Team Babido. So we immediately see a lot of gang activity going on. We see Zapdos on Zapdos, then into Jirachi on Jirachi, and we see Near Curve getting a bit lucky there with the 20% Fire Punch burn. That can definitely suck if the Jirachi intends on stalling something out in the future. It's not getting leftovers, instead, it is going to be taking damage. So that's immediately a uh, pretty nasty start for Smilzo. Or I actually don't know how to pronounce this dude's name uh, because, like, some, some Pokemon dudes' names are uh, quite nasty. I don't know, I'm, I'm not Italian, so it might be some Italian thing. <laughs> Nobody knows. Wish goes up from uh, Smilzo, though. He can, I mean, he can, I guess, just, just yeah, the, like, these Jirachis are not gonna be able to do anything versus each other. If Smilzo has something like Body Slam or Fire Punch, he can attempt to, uh, Go for the status right there. Yeah, as he does. Lanier Curve goes into the Cloyster. Pretty safe play right there. Trying to get up a nice juicy spike. Uh, this is, yeah, Cloyster is definitely very nice. He get he can just he can basically just get up a free spike. Smilzo has shown the Zap blows. That could be a switch in, I guess. If he has something better in the back, that is, uh, that's good as well. Not a lot of things like to switch into Cloyster, though. So, yeah, Cloyster is definitely a big threat. Especially if Smilzo does not pack the rapid spin. In that case, the spikes are going to get set up. Uh, Skulls can get basically almost free setups on, or almost free uh, switch ins on the Shirachi. Obviously, it has to be scared of the burn because that will weaken a potential explosion by a lot, but still. Uh, layer one of the spikes goes up so it has been a fat minute since I've uploaded and if you if you like me not uploading at all right and if you like me being late with every single upload you're gonna love my channel link will be down below <laughs> okay I don't even know what the fuck I'm saying a linear curve might have a nice grass type in the back obviously it has to be scared of something like a nice juicy bandit drill pack just hitting that grass type right on the dome you can switch back to Jirachi up as the thunder comes out okay that's that's pretty scary. If it is like something like Spit F Jirachi, it's gonna be able to slurp that up, but it can definitely get paralyzed. So the thunder goes to the side. If it's like Magna Thunder, this is gonna do a shit ton, even to Spit F Rachi. But Spit F Rachi can obviously go for the burn on the Zapdos. I've seen like Thunder Rest, which is like a really odd set. I don't know if he does have that, but the Clay Doll is the rapid spinner. So Lanier Curve just sets up a uh, sets up a wish. He can wish patch that into Cloyster pretty easily right here. Although obviously Cloyster does not love taking psychics and it doesn't want to get toxic. If Smilzo has any one of those, but Rabbit Spin is here super obvious. Um, toxic does come out, but does go to the side, which really, really sucks because he that would have been a free Toxic, would have forced the Claydol to refresh. But to be honest, curvy, the, <laughs> I almost said curvy line because uh, that's his nickname right now. I got, I'm gonna throw it off by these nicknames. I mean, the line air curve could have just switched out for free on the Rabbit Spin anyway. But Toxic is cool to scout if this Claydol has refresh. So this earthquake's not gonna do too much. It's gonna do about 40. That's a head calc though. It might do a bit more. It might be underestimating big Claydol right here. But Machamp comes in. Oh no. So Wish comes out from Jirachi. Uh, this Jirachi can basically eat this up for breakfast. Uh, but I think easy. I think this is the freest Zapdos of life. If some champ goes for rock move, I don't really know what Machamp's carry. I think uh, the the best set is Bandit for sure. So if, if this shit gets like Bandit rock move and he just smashes the Zapdos, I don't know if that kills. Uh, again, I'm not like too familiar with Machamp because this is kind of an Unmon. This is a really cool Pokemon. Um, but yeah, if Smilzo wants to go for that rock move, that's alright, but I think fighting move is the best play, because Jirachi could also just stay in, eat up the attack with the wish, and fire back an attack, so Zapdos is a pretty easy play, it's gonna eat this cross chop, okay, it's not gonna eat this cross chop at all, because the crit comes out, really, that's so unlucky, dude, now this Machamp might actually just go to town, dude, yeah, this really sucks, dude, <laughs> dude, why did you have to crit, that's not, that's not okay, Mr. Machamp, so, the Zapdos would have probably taken about, like, 55, because, yeah, that's bandit as shit. There's no way that uh, kills, not, not even with the crit, if that's not bandit. So, I think it would have done about, like, 55, 50. Like, about from something from 50 to 60. Because Machamp's pretty strong with the choice band activated. But, yeah, the Zapdos would have definitely eaten that up. Gotten the wish up. Uh, gotten back to almost full. And it would have been able to switch into Machamp again. And scare this Machamp out. Scare it out into Claydol or something. So, this is definitely horrible for a linear curve. He hasn't really shown a good Machamp answer yet. If he has, like, something like a Gengar in the back, he can switch that in on a cross job. But if he would have a Gengar, he might want to switch that in on the Machamp anyway. Because uh, I guess Machamp could have gone for a dark move there if Machamp does even have that. Because, again, I'm not too knowledgeable on Machamp. I think he gets something like Payback in the generation, though. Uh, so, if it would have Payback to the Gengar slash Jirachi, I don't know. Maybe he didn't want to switch in the Gengar. But yeah, we do see a Metagross come out, so probably no Ghost type in the back. We see Double Steel Psychic, which is, uh, I mean, I mean, these two really good. Jirachi and Metagross are both really good, so it's not that uh, odd, but yeah, I guess it kind of is. So this Metagross can just fire off a fat Bandit attack. I think Bandit Meter Mash might kill the Machamp. It might just be a roll to kill the Machamp. I'm uh, not too sure about that. But this Machamp definitely does not want to stay in. Cross Shop is not going to kill the Metagross at all. Metagross is even going to outspeed Machamp. 
if our, unless it's like really fast Machamp is slow Metagross with just HP invested Metagross. But either way, this Machamp doesn't want to stay in. It could also be special Metagross with Psychic. Uh, I'm rambling on too much. <laughs> the bottom line is Machamp does not want to stay in here. Um, Jirachi could be a switch in uh, by Smilza trying to trying to scout the set, I guess. But I don't know it's not really that good of a switch in. He's burned too, so he's not getting any leftovers. And you don't want to switch into an EQ. He can go into Zapdos. As the Milotic just comes in as... Holy shit, okay. Lightning Roof just pops a fat boom. Milotic just goes down. Um, he doesn't want the nuke, I guess. Meter Mash doesn't kill always. And nuke was a good play anyway. Because you could remove Jirachi if you switch into that. If he wants to scout by going Claydol first. Which isn't that good of a play. Because Bandit Meter Mash is going to rock Claydol's world. But I guess Boom was, yeah, boom was a fine play there. Personally, I would have... I don't know. He he made a really good play. He removed the bulky water early, although the bulky water doesn't seem like too big of a threat to the team. Could have taken on the Milotic with Jirachi for sure. So I don't know. It, yeah, I guess. I guess. I, I mean, it's not a bad play per se. So Cloyster comes in on the champ. This Cloyster is. Uh, yeah, he, unless he has a cross chop switch in, this is gonna have to boom here, because this Cloyster is definitely not eating that up. That's a super effective banded cross chop. So we're either gonna see a cross chop switch in, um, yeah, or just the fat boom. Because I don't know what would be a cross chop switch in. He already has two psychic types and a flying type. There, I don't think there's any type uh, he, he has left that resists fighting. So Smilzo's in a really good position at this moment. Uh, Lanier Curve's Jirachi is still a threat, though, in a way. Because it can toxic the zap those. It can start getting some dodges because it's not Thunderbolt, it's Thunder. It can toxic. I mean, it can't really stall the uh, clay to auto refreshes. So I guess I guess that's the thing. t comes in from Lanier Curve on the zap those from Smilzo. Good play by Lanier Curve. Gets that prediction right. Now, I think here Crunch is the pretty safe play if you if you are special and judging from the team uh because he has a cloister and everything and he does want to get that spin action and he has like two boomers so i assume he i assume this is pursuit trap tar with like crunch and everything rock slide there's no way the zapdos is staying in. even if it does stay in thunder does not tweak ko uh i at least i assume unless the zapdos is like really strong so i definitely think crunch is the play here if he wants to play it safe he rock slides but Lanier Curve is in the back, so in my opinion, Crunch is the play here. Catches the Claydol, catches the Jirachi. Although I don't know why he would go Jirachi, but <laughs> I think Claydol is a pretty obvious play here. So you catch that. If you predict him to stay in with the Zapdos, which the Zapdos can definitely put in some work. I don't, yeah. See, Claydol does come on. So he hard Ice Beams, which actually doesn't do jack shit because it's not stabbed. But yeah, Ice Beam was a fine play as well. Covered him staying in. Kind of covered the Claydol. Now this big Suicune comes in as the Earthquake comes out. So I don't know if that's like, that's not really a bad, yeah. I mean, Crunch wouldn't, yeah, I don't know. Maybe Crunch. I guess I yeah he had Ice Beam, so Ice Beam was the play for sure. If he had Crunch, that was definitely the play. But yeah, Earthquake. Don't know how I feel about that play because he's in two kill range from Crunch, if I recall correctly. The Zapdos actually eats that uh, pump up for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Next pump is not going to be able to eat that up with the sand damage though. Now he can go into Jirachi and start fishing for misses. Uh, if the para comes out, this is basically already over, uh, unless Lanier Curve gets really lucky. So. I'll just see what's gonna happen. I assume the Claydol's just gonna come out as Jirachi Wish tacks up, gets back to full, so I can keep checking the zap those. And then he can pull it back to Suicune. If this is Rest Suicune, I think Lanier Curve is in a good spot, because Rest Suicune versus the three that Smilzo has at the moment can definitely tear it up. Definitely just go in, especially versus Claydol. It just comes in for free about, uh, on Claydol. Although, I think it is, it's like Rapid Spin Earthquake Refresh is already revealed. I don't know if Refresh is revealed. That Toxic Miss uh, really sucks, actually, because <laughs> he could have just... I mean, now he has the Toxic again, but... Yeah, I don't think there's a, there's a play outside of Toxic again. But yeah, now Smilza can just pull it back into Claydol. I assume this is Refresh, otherwise you don't switch it in like this. So, last move is either Psychic or Toxic. Or, unless I'm missing something and I really have down. So, he just wishes up. I assume he's going to pass the wish into the Suicune right here. Or, he's going to... Oh, Zapdos comes out. And he's just going to stay in a Toxic again. Okay, that's a really fire play. Uh, to be honest, he did have the wish up, so... If the Claydol went for Earthquake, he just got the thing up. But yeah, it covers the Zapdos as well. Really good play by a near curve. Gets awarded by it. Gets awarded for it by uh, a Thunder Miss. So Wish comes up again. Zapdos is not going to be able to do shit to Jirachi. I assume Smills is just going to pull it back into Claydol. Doesn't really have a reason to stay in with Zapdos. Uh, he dry switches into Claydol, which is I don't. That's not really weird, I guess. He actually gets a lucky burn again. So this forces the Claydol to refresh here. So this is a free switch into Suicune. Uh, I I in my opinion, Suicune is the only play here. He can also just wish up. He can wish in the Suicune, but it's, this is the this is like a pretty obvious refresh in my opinion. And even if he goes for the Earthquake, that's still fine. Yep, Lanier Curve profits off that burn. Uh, yeah, really, really profits off that really well because if this pump comes out and if it actually connects to anything, anything is just gonna topple. Claydol topples, uh, Zapdos topples. Jirachi does not appreciate it. If he CMs up here on the Jirachi, that would be a really cool play. But he gets lucky and crits it. Now, I, I don't think uh, Lanier Curve's. Like, both players are hacking, basically. This crit really sucks for Smilzo. 
but uh, and also the uh, fire punch burn force and clouds are refreshing the fire punch burn earlier on the uh, Jirachi here. But I definitely don't think I definitely don't think linear curve is hacking because of the cross chop crit earlier. That was a huge, huge, huge crit. Uh, now linear curve just gets some revenge hacks by hitting both pumps and critting one of them. So nice, nice, <laughs> nice revenge hacks. Although uh, this is kind of a hacksy game. Now the Zapdos switch in is obviously Jirachi here. Actually, I don't know if Jirachi is at full. Wait, yeah, it is at full. Okay, so he has to he has to fear para. Yeah. Yeah, like, Lanier Curve isn't even getting paralyzed, so the hacks is definitely, like, kind of even at this point. Maybe even in Lanier Curve's favor. As my boy Doc is showing the PP, I don't think that's too much needed, because Suicune is just going to be the breaker here. Uh, Lanier Curve is just going to have to play around with the Suicune just coming in the break. It's Rapid Spin, Earthquake, Refresh. Yeah, li like I said before, last move could be either Toxic or Psychic. Or some, like, new metagame trend that I'm unaware of, because I'm a noob idiot. As Lanier Curve just goes for that hard... Toxic to force the Claydol to refresh, but this means Jirachi is into a kill range of the Thunder. Uh, that's assuming he hits both Thunders. But yeah, Wish gets thrown up again. Jirachi's trying to stay out of range. This is the most obvious refresh ever. But Smilza can just fire off a free refresh because nobody risks their Jirachi and nobody just risks the losing right here. So Lanier Curve is basically forced to tech up here. <laughs> As Smilza actually goes into Boy! What? Hello? <laughs> Hello? Okay, I don't know what that play was. That play was insane. Obviously it worked, but like, why would you fire punch there? What the? F Holy shit, that was a power play. <laughs> that Dominus has got asserted very, very hard. I, he can't even go back to Claydol. Claydol doesn't even beat this reliably. He can just go back to full on the Claydol and then switch into Suicune eventually. I think this is over, dude. What was that fire punch play? That was really asserting some some new type of dominance. I don't even get going Zapdos because what does Zapdos even gain you? I guess he was fishing for Para. I guess he was trying to go Zapdos then, right? on the uh, pretty obvious protect there and then thunder and fish for para because i assume his last can't really deal with jirachi too well so i guess that was his win con but yeah that's that's kind of okay yeah that's that's kind of weird linear curve just smashed him with a fire punch damn this this definitely turned the tide i mean the tide was already in linear curve's side so let's see what this last is i think the last has to be a physical breaker mm, maybe a nice uh, he doesn't really need aerodactyl on the team at all maybe a nice doesn't need T-Dart too. I don't know what the last bit. Yeah, it is a physical breaker as it is Heracross. That's interesting. So double fighting. Nice fighting spam core. A uh, really interesting team by Smilzo. I really like it actually. Like the uh, like Heracross, you don't see that Mon too often. It's pretty pretty viable at the moment. My Lottie, you don't see that too often at all. And then a nice Bandit Machamp. So he goes for the as yet. Oh oh. <laughs> and at the end we get some hacks. Oh holy shit! No, not like this, dude. Jirachi definitely dies to Megahorn from this range because Heracross is powerful as a bitch. Actually, I don't know if it dies. I don't know what I'm saying. I think it actually doesn't die. Might take like 70, 80. I got a bit too excited there. But this Jirachi is going to have to go for Toxic. I don't think he can win after this Toxic. Dude, Lanier Curve still had this, but he just... Holy shit. This Jirachi is not well trained at all. Dude, you can't just go to the side like that. Yeah, he actually eats Megahorn. Okay. He goes for the Toxic. I don't know if that was a play. I think Fire Punch Burn was the better play there because I think Suicune dies to Megahorn from the range it's at. Not too sure, but he gets the tech up. I guess he can... Toxic tech stall instead of just trying to hope for the burn. Uh, I still think he loses though. Uh, he has to fish off miss, but he can just break break here, get a kill. Yup. I don't know if Suicune died to break break. I'm, my Suicune might have been the play there because I don't know if that died to break break. Now Smilzo just spams break break here and kind of just wins. Damn, what a shit game. <laughs> I mean, the game the game itself was fine, but like that, that this is a shit ending. Like you can't just have this as the ending. So if you would have just if he would have just been able to Toxic on the first one, he could have Fire Punch, and then this Heracross would have already been dead, because Fire Punch definitely does 40, uh, even if it's not Stab. It's like it's still a Jirachi with 100 special attack base. Maybe even Invest... I don't know, it's probably not Invested, since it's <laughs> since it's uh, Wish Tech Toxic, it's probably not uh, Attack Invested, but still, that's still going to do 40, or at least... Or at least, like, when this Jirachi goes down, it would have put it in range of Toxic, and then Suicune could just hit one pump and wipe out the Claydol. So that Toxic miss definitely sealed up the deal. Really, yeah, really bad for Team Oceania. Italy is already 1-0 up. At the time of uh, uploading this video, I think Italy got another dub. So, Italy, I think, is 3-0 up at the end of this game. So, that's kind of filthy. Uh, Italy de definitely destroying Oceania. Oceania was doing way better than expected in uh, the uh, group stage. Or however you call it. <laughs> I just call it group stage because that's how it's called in the, uh, the World Cup of uh, Soccer, Football, however you want to call it. But, yeah, uh, Oceania did pretty well for their lineup. I mean, I'm not saying they're... Like, their old gens lineup is fire. Um, and their new gens lineup is actually pretty heat as well. But people expected Oceania to do really poorly. But they're uh, they're down by a lot versus Italy right now. Um, 
damn that protect me it's just to rub it just to rub it in dude that's so so filthy dude if he if he even got like that double teched then he just yeah if he if he even got that double teched dude this was some fat hacks misses the toxic and then doesn't even get the double tech to get rewarded for it damn that's yeah, this was a really filthy game uh but tonight i'm i'm on a recording grind i'm just gonna pump out a few games because i've been late uh this is probably gonna be the first one to go up so if you enjoyed this video leave a like subscribe to doctor's channel if you don't like any uploads at all subscribe to my channel down below as well and yeah i'll see you next time i'll see you i'll probably see you tomorrow with a new game of advanced adv whatever you want to call it <laughs>